welcome back to our workshop. Today I'm working on this pedestal table that has a rock to it. It's a common problem because legs become loose on pedestals. Now I've seen a number of repairs where people have repaired these incorrectly and not fixed the right problem. So I'm going to show you what not to do, but more importantly, I'm going to show you how to be successful at a repair like this. Stick with me, I'll show you how it's done. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. The front rail here, you can see this has been broken off. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. The first thing you may have noticed is how tiny this table is. These tables typically have chairs at them, and I can't explain why this is so small, but if you've seen one like it before, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. This is a folding leaf table, so this folds up so you can accommodate more people around a table. It's a great compact way to store it. I'm going to flip this upside down on some padding, and we'll take a look at the legs. What I see is there's a gap here, so this leg is loose. There's a gap here. Let's just see if I can move these. Yeah, you see how they're moving in and out? And someone's repaired this before because there's a nail here, here, and here. And this is one mistake I don't want you to duplicate. Putting nails in this are holding these legs on, but it's still allowing them to move. It doesn't solve the problem. So please don't put nails on these. Let's continue to take it apart. I need to take these nails out first, and then I can take the legs off. Okay, so that one came out. That's a finishing nail. Okay, that's starting to come out. That's number two. There we go. So with that nail taken out, this joint should now come apart. Let's see. Yep, that's coming apart. Just needs a little bit of wiggling to get it to come out. There we go. So that nail through there should have gone through the dowel, but it doesn't look like it did. So the nail there didn't really do much. There's glue residue here that I need to clean off. And you can see there's a crack here, right where that nail had gone in at the top. I'm not sure if that crack was there before the nail went in or the nail caused the crack. But in any case, adding nails here is not a good idea. Before I take anything else off, I want to label all the parts and make sure I can put them back in the same spot that they came from. So I'll pull up my marker here and just simply label them one through four. Now when I pull these apart, you can see they're loose here. And I push them back together again. It's typical that these dowels come loose and these ones want to stay put. So some people are tempted to drive a screw through here to hold that leg in place. But unfortunately, because of the pressure put on these, it's just really a temporary fix and it causes more damage to the wood. So I wouldn't recommend doing that either. Let's see if I can pull this leg off. And what you'll find is some legs will come off easier than others. And they're difficult to take off at times. So what you can do is just put a wedge in the top here and then use leverage to pull out this part here. So I'll open this up, put the wedge in, push up on the leg, and it pulls out here. You just want to be careful that you're not doing this right on this edge of wood because you could break that off. I'm just inset a little bit. So let's see. Oh, I think the finishing nail did go through this one. See right there, that's where the nail had gone in. I'll show you this wedge technique from the top so you can see what I'm doing. So this wedge here, I don't want to touch this outside edge because it's fragile. So I'll insert it just a little bit on the inside there, pull the leg open as far as I can, 
and then close it up. And then when I open it again, put that wedge down further and then keep working that wedge down. A joint like this that doesn't have a lot of play in it, another thing you can do is take a wedge and drive it in there with a hammer. And that will start to open it up so you can start wiggling it back and forth and loosening it up. You may also need to combine a couple of pieces of wood to get a wedge wide enough to work that you can keep pulling that apart. With the legs off here, I can turn my attention to this. There's a little bit of play in this, and I see something metallic here, and on this side, it looks like the head of a nail. So I think I need to drive a nail out to the other side, and that should free this up, that I can re-glue it and make it solid again. I'll get out a punch here that looks like the right size for the nail. Let's see if I can drive that through. That doesn't seem to be moving, so I'm going to try the other side where the head is, and we'll see if I have any luck there pulling it out. Here you can see the nail head's pretty large, but it's been countersunk under the surface of the wood, so I need to drill to get underneath it so I can pull it out. That nail is a lot shorter than I thought, so I'll turn this around. It must be a finishing nail on this other side, so I'll work the drill around it and expose the nail head. Now it might seem counterintuitive that I'm making such a mess around this nail, but there's really no way to pull out a finishing nail unless you can get onto the surface. So this allows me to get in there, grab that nail and pull it out, and that's why I hate it when people use finishing nails on furniture as a temporary fix. And it's just not the way to fix furniture. Well, this has turned into worst case scenario. You see back here, there's a thread. So this is actually a broken off screw. So the only way to deal with this is to actually use a plug cutter. Cut a circle around here, and then I'll be able to take that piece of wood out. This is what a plug cutter looks like. So it's hollow in the middle and it cuts a plug. And you can see here the threads of the screw. And if I twist the turning, you can see I'm now through there. Turns out it wasn't a screw, it was a ring shank nail that had a bend in it. So this should wiggle out now. Oh, wait, maybe it's a screw. No, oh, it's turning. Okay, oh, there's a screw from the top that was holding it in. 
So that means everything here has to come apart so I can access that screw and get this put back together again. So time to pull out the impact driver. I'm now ready to glue this back together again and I need to take the old glue off here and inside the mortars there's glue, I need to take that out as well. And then on the tenon here, it looks pretty clean, I'll just give it a light sand and then we'll be ready to put the glue back on and get it back together again. I clean out the bottom of the mortars with a Forstner bit, this is a drill bit that drills a flat bottom hole. So just a matter of going in here backwards first to get to the bottom of the hole and then forwards to drill out the glue. No, there's still more in there. Oh, a little bit more. And you can see here on the drill bit, the glue is sticking to the drill bit. There we go. There you can see the glue is now out of the bottom of the mortise. So I'm all ready for the glue up here. What I'm going to do is use the back of an artist brush to put hide glue in. And if you don't know about hide glue yet, you can check out the video. I'll put a link in the video description. It's a video I did with Tom Johnson and we talk about hide glue, PVA and epoxy and where you should be using each of those in your repairs. So it goes inside the mortise and then it's going on the outside here. And it's important to put glue on both surfaces, both inside the mortise and on the tenon. That way you get full glue coverage. I've repaired so many pieces that have failed because there's been a lack of glue on the joint. It's the best way to ensure you're making maximum use of that gluing surface on the whole joint and it's not going to come apart on you. So there the tenons covered. I'm going to skip this part here because I've got lots of glue there and I want to line this up with the hole in here so that the legs are going to be in the proper spot. So I'll give this a twist here and line this up. Perfect, now I can clamp it. Now it's important every time you glue something to put clamping pressure on it. Glue without clamps is pretty useless and Tom and I talk about that in the video as well. You can see in the back of my workbench all the different types of glue that I use for furniture repair and restoration. I'll wipe off any glue squeeze out I've got here while it's still wet and then I'll set this aside and let it dry while we make some calls to clamp the legs together. 
I'll get out some softwood lumber here and some clamps and I'll set up these legs so we can look at how to make these calls. If I were to just try and clamp this, you can see there's no clamping surface for the clamp. What I need to do is make sure I've got clamping pressure this way, perpendicular to this line. That way I get a nice tight seam here and I make sure that all these parts are nice and snugly together. You can't just push them together and hope for the best. So a clamping call is basically a clamping block. So what I need to do is create a block that allows me to have clamping pressure here against the leg. And I'll pull out some softwood here, trace out a part, and show you how that's done. So I'll line this up here. I want a little bit of space at the top here so when I clamp it I can see what's going on. And then run it down to the bottom here. So I'm just going to trace this. Now the clamping pressure I need is perpendicular to this line. And I want the clamp in the middle of these two dowels. So my clamping pressure comes this way. Didn't draw that very straight. Which means the pad for the clamp needs to be this way. So I'm going to cut this section out here. And then I also need a clamping surface to hold a clamp onto the leg here. So I'll cut out something along lines like this. So really all I need is a piece of material that looks something roughly like that. So I'll cut that out in the bandsaw and give it a try. So try this out, I just line up the contour and then I need to clamp it down here to hold it in place. So just spin this open. So I'm clamping on the underside of this leg, so if I do leave a mark, no one's going to see that. And I'm using softwood on the top, so we don't create any marks on the surface. And here's where the clamping pad goes, so that'll give me perfect pressure for this. So I just need to make three more of these and we're ready for the glue up. The four clamping calls are now ready to go so I can glue this up. I'd like to ask you if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. It tells YouTube it's a quality video and they'll share it with more people. The glue set on this off camera, this has been about 90 minutes, so we're good to go here. I'll put the screws in this and the base. It's just going to make this process a little bit easier. Before I put this next piece on, I'll just put some high glue in here. Spread it around so I have a nice strong connection between these pieces. Now I can turn this right side up and I've got a base that I can work from. I just need to clean off the glue surfaces here in the mortises and on the dowels and then make sure each of these dowels are secure before I apply the glue and put it together. When you've got glue residue on the end of a dowel like this, the easy way to deal with it is I just put it on the edge of my workbench and then take the corner of my chisel and rest it on the workbench and then just go through a slicing action to take it off. Just like that. You can see the glue residue on the inside of the mortise here. I just need to run a drill through to clear that out. Now when you do this, you want to run the drill in reverse to make sure that you're not going to change the direction of the hole. So get... Oh, wow, that was easy. Okay, and on this side, let's see. So just go backwards and then go forwards. Yeah, there's no glue on those, so we're good to go. To check that the dowels are tight, I use fencing pliers because I can get a gentle grip all the way around the dowel without damaging it. And I can just see if there's any movement here in the dowels. Nope, these are tight, we're good to go. I've got all the parts numbered here so I know exactly where they go. Two's here, three's here, one and four. So we're ready for the glue. 
So it's important to put glue on both the inside of the mortise and on the tenon. This piece barely had any glue residue on any of these dowels here. So you want to make sure you've got full coverage and take full advantage of the strength of all of that wood contacting the surfaces of each part. I've seen a number of pieces that I've had to repair that just don't have enough adhesive on them. So it takes a little bit extra time to do this, just a few minutes, but it's definitely worth it to make sure that you've got a strong repair. Now I can move on to putting a little bit of glue on these parts here. And the concave shape of these actually leaves a bit of a gap right where the dowels are. So really the glue that I need is really just on the edge. So put a little bit there. And then the dowels need glue. And the glue that goes in the mortises gets pushed to the back of the joint. The glue that's on the dowels will stay near the front. And that's why I recommend coating both sides because the glue is going to move around. So here's the first one. And with hide glue, it acts like a lubricant, so this is great. It just makes putting these parts together easy. You don't really have to struggle with them. And then when you're gluing up, you want to move pretty quickly. So you're working within the window of the open time of the glue. If you're working on a complex project, there's a type of glue called fish glue. And it'll give you 90 minutes to go through your gluing up process. So it's great for something like a complex Windsor chair. Okay, so those are on now. Now to add these. Okay, so I'll turn this sideways, put the clamps on, and you can see how this is going to come together. So you can see how those pads are connecting, squeeze the clamps, and it closes up these joints. So do that on this side as well. Okay, and then I'll turn it right side up. And make sure that there's no wobbling. See, I've got a little bit there. So, I'll just stress it a bit. Okay, now there's no wobbling. By putting a bit of weight here, I make sure all those four legs are in the same plane and it won't end up with a wobbly table. I'll let this dry, let it harden for 24 hours to make sure that glue comes to full strength and then I can put it back together and patch these holes. Everything's dry now, so I can take the clamps off. And what we'll do is patch these two holes that I had to create when I took those nails out. Okay, so this one here, so this is where I use a plug cutter to cut a hole, and I can use a screw cap on that and level it off. On the other side, I'll just turn this over. I've got some other marks here I need to cover off and I'll use a burn-in wood filler to disguise that. So let me flip this back over once more. We'll get this glued in here and then disguise it with some finish. So I'm gonna plug, I'll just put some PVA around the outside, PVA glue. So this is carpenter's glue. The stuff I'm using here is dark. It's just what I prefer to use for 
a lot of repair that I do because it's less noticeable instead of having a ghost line when you've got light glue. So put that in there. Orient the grain the same way here so we get some variety. And I'll just tap that in with the mallet. I'll get on my kit here and I've got stain markers and burning wood filler. And in this package here, I've got a battery operated soldering iron and a plastic razor blade. That should be everything I need. So I don't have any rough edges I need to sand down, but I do need to get rid of some of those light colored marks around the edges just so it doesn't show, shine through on the wood filler. So that'll just disguise the edges. And then what I can do is get out my burn-in wood filler and figure out what color I need. So that one is probably a little too dark. That one, that looks pretty good. So just turn on the soldering iron, let it heat up. And these battery operated soldering irons are really great because they heat up so quickly. You can see it's already starting to smoke there. So I'm just melting it and dropping the wax into that void. And get it filled up there and let it dry. Now, being such a large void, that wax is going to crack as it dries. So just need to let that settle down. And as it gets less glossy, that means it's drying. You can see how rapidly it dries. So I can now put another coating on here. And when you're doing this, you need to make sure you warm up the wax that's underneath it. So it all blends into one piece of wax. You don't want it to, the top wax not to melt with the bottom wax and then you end up with a piece that can chip out. So instructions on this wax say you should wait until it's fully dried, but I like going over it like that. I'll just rub that over. Now, there isn't any variety in the color, just because it isn't wood. But what I can do is take a graining marker and I can just run a few lines across it. And it helps disguise what's there. Now, you can put a top coat on this, but for something like this, it's not going to be that visible. I'll just leave it like that. So let's flip this over. This is called a crank neck chisel, and we use that to pare away the cap here. So before I do, I just want to make sure that it's as sharp as possible. So I'm honing it here. Now this is a unique chisel because it allows you to get flat on a surface to be able to pare away and make that level. So because this is a button cap, it's rounded on top. So what I'm doing is just taking a little bit off each side and I'll get this down to almost flat before I really start paying attention to the surface that I'm working on. So now I'm right at the surface, so I just keep my chisel level and ease my way into it. And just pare away the top of that cap. So nice and smooth here, just have to do it once more from this side, 
and we'll be good to go. There we go. So now I'll stand this up and see what it looks like. And this is how we need to match the stain, looking at it from this direction. I'll put on some dark walnut acrylic stain and see how this works. Looks like it might be the right color. Just fill it around. And then I use some garnet shellac just to put a top coat on. Rip it on, let it dry. Probably needs about two coats of that. Just wipe it off the surrounding area and we should be good to go. Now I've just tip this on the side because I'm finding I'm not able to control the finish enough. So with a fine paintbrush here, I can just get it on that bare wood to get that build up I need. And shellac dries so quickly, this really only takes a few minutes to get that coverage on there. Earlier this week, I was helping a viewer with their particular project in terms of what stain to use and what finish. It can be really confusing because there are so many products out there. I offer these sessions over Zoom, and if you're interested, you can go to our wouldn'titbenice.ca website, and on there, look for advice sessions. You can purchase one, and we can talk over Zoom about your particular project, and I'll give you advice based on your skills and the tools that you have available. I'll flip this over, we'll get this table put together. Oh, this is interesting. I see someone else has repaired this previously. You can see there's a 258 here and a 258 here. So this must be how someone lined up the parts. I just used a white pencil crayon here and here so I could line up the parts. I can now get this table back to the customer and this pedestal base will last for decades to come. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned a few new things. I'll leave a few more videos here that I think you'll enjoy. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click over here and click on that bell icon to get notified every time we publish a video. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture.